because he has this mountain of wealth that he is sitting on like some sort of fictional dragon. Oh my god, hey, and welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. If you are meeting me for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. Hence, Mickey Joe Theatre. It's, you yeah, you get the idea. I am coming back on here today to talk still about Android Webber, Cameron McIntosh, and The Phantom of the Opera. I thought we were done with this. I made a video two weeks ago. I talked about the rumors of Phantom changing. Was it gonna close? Everything we knew back then. And this story has just kept going with so many completely contrasting daily updates. I'm confused, you're confused, we're all confused. I thought I would update you with a little part two. I also want to talk about Cameron McIntosh. Sir Cameron McIntosh, Lord, Duke, King, Emperor, Cameron McIntosh, and Sir Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber, MBE, maybe. No? I don't know. There's just one show that keeps them together. It's Cam Mac versus Andrew Lloyd Webber. Essentially what has happened during this whole lockdown period is obviously theatre has been on the front line. Everyone's been very concerned for theatre. The government response has been very lacking, very late, and with a lot of unanswered questions. At the forefront of this debate, some of the strongest and loudest voices in musical theatre have been Sir Cameron Mackintosh and Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. The way this has been interpreted in popular opinion is Cam Mac has kind of become the bad guy of the pandemic. Um, by all accounts, he's been slightly hasty and premature and arguably a little bit reckless in pushing for non-socially distanced theatre to reopen as soon as possible because of the financial struggle he would otherwise face. Questionable. Andrew Webber, on the other hand, has been very pioneering and he has been viewed as the saviour of the people for putting together this performance at the London Palladium, which was socially distanced and trying these new measures and trying to push for a new version in which theatre can take place as soon as possible. It would seem as though Andrew Lloyd Webber is the hero of this story and Cameron McIntosh is the villain. Not unlike The Phantom of the Opera, it's a little bit more nuanced than it first may seem. We're going to break that down. So before we start the cage fight, let's look at our fighters. In the red corner, we have Andrew Lloyd Webber. He wrote a lot of musicals with Sir Tim Rice, launched the mega musical alongside producer Sir Cameron McIntosh. They collaborated on the Phantom of the Opera, and they collaborated on Cats. And I will say straight up that Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals are the reason I got into musical theatre as a young child. The VHS versions of Joseph and Cats, huge to me, life-changing. And I love a lot of his shows now. I love Evita. I love Bits of Sunset Boulevard. I love Jesus Christ Superstar. I was in a production of Jesus Christ Superstar. I think he's done a lot of incredible work. Whether or not all of his work is wholly original has been a point of contention for many years. I'm not gonna make that video here because there are plenty of examples on YouTube. If you want to search Andrew Lloyd Webber plagiarism, there is plenty of evidence out there. Go and listen to The Vaults of Heaven from Whistle Down the Wind and try not to hear the Jurassic Park theme tune because it's impossible. Following his success in the 80s, Andrew Lloyd Webber has become enormously rich. His musicals made him so successful to the point that he is synonymous with musical theater in the UK. The issue with this is that he has become so big in UK musical theater, there is literally no space for anyone else, which is why Many of our musicals are now written by pop singers who turn to musical theatre writing. Musicals like The Boy in the Dress, musicals like Everybody's Talking About Jamie, musicals like The Band, musicals like The Girls, all written by singer-songwriters turned musical theatre composers. And if you think about the most prominent musical theatre writers in the US still living, you think about Stephen Sondheim, you think about Stephen Schwartz, Jason Robert Brown, you think about... Pasek and Paul, Lin-Manuel Miranda, oh my god. There are certainly a lot more notable composers that have name recognition beyond superfans. And I don't know if you have that in the UK at the moment. There are a lot of great, excellent working composers in the UK at the moment, but they have not achieved the same level of success that Andrew Lloyd Webber has, because there is very little room for them to. What he has done is he has given a lot to young performers in the industry. There are whole foundations and grants at drama schools that exist because of Andrew Lloyd Webber. He's pushed for music education in schools on the back of his production of School of Rock the Musical. His TV talent casting programs that may or may not have just existed in order to advertise the productions that the people would eventually go into have created huge amounts of talent that now have more at-home name recognition that have gone on to do amazing things in the West End. People like Rachel Tucker, people like Keith Jack, people like Jodie Prenger, Lee Mead, 
the people who won the programme and even the ones that didn't. Sam Barks, oh my God, Daniel Hope, Lauren Samuels. So many people still working in the West End who have come out of those types of programmes. He's done great things for performers. He does not give the same opportunities to young composers, to new musicals, to new musical theatre writers. And that's where a lot of the criticism of him comes from. A lot of people are saying, particularly on Twitter at the moment, he is above criticism because he's doing all of this for us right now in the pandemic. And if he wasn't doing it, nothing else would be done. And honestly, I don't know what he's achieving right now, to be perfectly honest. The thing, the Palladium, great for him to have put it on. At the same time, that all took place only for him to immediately afterwards say, obviously, theatre can't run like this. This whole way we've set up today, this isn't actually possible long term. So I'm not sure why the test at the Palladium, arguably a slightly pointless experiment if that was never your plan in the first place. At the same time, I have such limited sympathy for Andrew Lloyd Webber because he is worth approximately 800 million pounds. Another interesting thing is that his new musical production of Cinderella starring Carrie Hope Fletcher was meant to be opening at the Gillian Lynn Theatre this year because of COVID. It was one of the first productions to delay its opening and now push it back even further to next year. I wonder if he would be quite as keen to push for theatres reopening if he didn't have a new production in the works. My suspicion is he might not. And to everyone who's saying only Andrew Lloyd Webber is pushing for the industry to move forwards, is pushing for things to change, there are loads of talented producers who are just right now trying to save their theatres. Look at what the guys at the barn are doing. Look at what Lambert Jackson are doing, bringing us these amazing online things like Songs for a New World, like the last five years. Look at everything that Adam Lenson has done with Signal concerts that he's managed to produce with live music and live duets happening in lockdown. That seems crazy impossible, and yet it's happened. There are pioneering UK producers doing all sorts of amazing work. It is not just Andrew Lloyd Webber. In so many senses, it is not just Andrew Lloyd Webber. UK musical theatre has been and always will be bigger than him. Now we have Sir Cameron Mackintosh, producer of Les Mis and Phantom and a whole host of other things. Owns a bunch of theatres. As much as Cameron has a reputation for the mega musical and for changing musical theatre and for excellence and producing great things and great scale, he has also gained a reputation for downsizing on productions and scaling things down in a way that makes them more profitable. Recently, what he's done with Les Mis, changing it in London, where the original production has closed and been replaced by the cheaper touring version. The rumor has been that he wanted to do the same thing with Phantom. Here is where it gets messy, because it was rumored Phantom was going to change in London, be replaced by a cheaper version, half the orchestra size, no longer royalties to the original creative team, because even though Cameron Mackintosh is worth 1.25 billion pounds, harps are expensive. Then, Android Webber tweeted, no, when it reopens, it will be the brilliant original. Then we find out the entire cast have been unceremoniously fired in the middle of a global pandemic. We see pictures of the chandelier out literally on the side of the pavement. A lot of questions are asked at this point. Cameron McIntosh then, since my last video, gave a bizarre interview where he was quoted as saying, that because of the coronavirus's impact on the theatre industry, Phantom has had to permanently close in London, but they, they were hoping it would one day, someday in the future, reopen. This sent everyone into a panic. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, social media, everyone lost their minds that Phantom was closing. Some people were lamenting it, some people were celebrating, some people were saying it's not the end of the world and it's had a 30 year run. And we had barely had time to mourn the closing of Phantom of the Opera when Andrew Lloyd Webber, and his production company, the really useful group, were contacted by Matt Hemley and the stage and came out with the statement, no, it's not closing. And when it reopens, like everything else, it will be the original production. At this point, I have no idea what is going on. It would appear that Andrew Webber and Cameron McIntosh are clashing on this front. Fight! Like two grumpy old men with too much money, one of them wants to downsize the production, one of them wants to keep it the same. They are having this battle by leaking different statements to the press, I guess. It's surreal what is going on with this. It never made sense that Phantom would be the first show to close anyway. There are shows that do not do as good consistent business, do not have the name brand appeal, do not have the tourist appeal, and are more expensive to run, frankly. Phantom probably needs a lot of maintenance work to the set, to the theater, that is one thing. But for, to announce that it would have to close permanently because of COVID did not make sense at that time when that statement came out. There was a lot of things about that that did not make any sense. And while I am sympathetic 
to the cast and everyone involved, I have a limited amount of sympathy for Andrew Lloyd Webber and Cameron McIntosh because, as I say, they have a combined net worth of two billion pounds. I feel like we don't even process enough what a billion actually constitutes, the amount of people that you could pay, and the extent to which their financial contributions to the industry during this crisis have been comparatively very minimal compared to what other people have managed to fundraise and provide. It raises a lot of questions about whether they are actually interested in promoting this industry or promoting their own financial self-interests. And even if they are facing difficult decisions, and even if they are facing the closure of many of their shows, I will always have more sympathy for the small theatre owners who are just trying to save the building that their theatre is in, rather than the multi-millionaires and billionaires who have had to close their five concurrent productions of the same three-decade long-running show. The fact that there was a Broadway, a Korea, a Greece, a UK tour, a London production, a US tour as well, I think, probably more that I don't even know about. Like, there are other theatre makers who have much bigger things to worry about. Equally, and I'm really trying to avoid making this a political statement, but neither Andrew Lloyd Webber nor Cameron McIntosh are in the best position to criticise the Tory government that they have spent so many years endorsing. Andrew Lloyd Webber in 2015 famously flew back from the US to help try and vote through a cut to tax credits. This was a man who had voted in the House of Lords only a handful of times in two decades, uh, was doing it simply because he had been asked to. And Cameron McIntosh, who has been vocally supportive of leaving the EU slightly in disregard of all of the other people in his industry, talking about how likely that would be to decimate the theatre industry for the freelancers working in it. Again, he is in a very protected position because he has this mountain of wealth that he is sitting on like some sort of fictional dragon. I don't know who's winning this cage match. We're going to have to wait and see. It looks as though Phantom is being protected by Lloyd Webber and the tactics that Cameron McIntosh is using to try and suggest that it's closing uh, don't seem to be working. And the fact that he's resorting to these tactics, it doesn't seem like he has much of a foothold in this decision, nor do I think it really matters what happens overall. I know there are many Phantom fans out there who are desperate for the original production to be maintained on stage. I think, again, worse crises will come out of this pandemic for the theatre industry than whether or not the chandelier changes in Phantom. My thoughts and my sympathies are with the cast and with the band and with the crew and everyone working on that production who no longer has a job. What I do know is that neither of these men are your hero in lockdown. Neither of these men are the hero of the theatre industry. They're both pushing for something prematurely, that realistically cannot happen yet. The best thing that the theatre industry can do now is innovating, is the drive-in opportunities, is outdoor theatre opportunities, rather than trying to shepherd unsuspecting and willing audience members back into an environment that has not yet been deemed safe for them. And I've seen that post being shared with the crowd of people on the plane and the empty theatre, and the fact that one bad thing is happening does not suggest another should. Trust me, I am just as eager for live theatre to resume as anyone else out there, but it has to be in a way that protects its audience members and its casts and crew. So lots to think about there, about these two personalities and everything else that's going on in the theatre industry right now. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know down in the comment section down below what you think about Andrew Lloyd Webber and Cameron McIntosh and what they are both doing right now in terms of the theatre industry, in terms of the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more news updates and backstage gossip coming very, very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>